You have the style of a supervillain from a James Bond movie. Do I'm sorry? Pe- you look like a supervillain from a... Su- I've heard this before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have that evil streak, though. <laughs> you look like you're the guy in the mountains who's plotting. Yeah, no. I, I have some European evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something, yeah. <laughs> but you've been told this before? Yeah, yeah I've been told before. Yeah. I don't have I don't have the personality for it. However, you do. We'd be a good team together, you and me. Yes, we're both so tall that would look yeah, nice. I know. Just It'd give impress- me a tan. Impressive uh, <laughs> couple walking into a party, right? Yeah. We can be like, who can we take advantage of here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come hither. We'd be a hit. <laughs> We'd be a real hit. All right, Goddess Severa. Goddess Severa. You are a dominatrix. I am. Here in Los Angeles. You've, uh, you've been doing this for how long? Going on 26 years now. Where did this, where, where did this, is it a fetish? It's a fetish, right? Uh, it's a lifestyle, lifestyle. for me. Where, where did this lifestyle come from, do you think? Was it something you were exposed to or something? No, no, I'm supposed to be in academia. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a criminology professor, um, but life is interesting that way. When I was really young, I think this stuff is hardwired into a person just like a, a sexual identity. So I identify uh, with with kink, like norm, normal things. Hold this. Vanilla. Vanilla things just... For you? Mm, when I was a kid, the old woman who lived in a shoe, it's a story in Fairy Mother tale. Hubbard. Mm-hmm. She had so many kids, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread, gave them a spanking and sent them to bed. And so the illustration at the time is something that they wouldn't show now. It was this lady and she had this the child over her lap and she was spanking it and you could see the bare bum and it was red and the child was crying and I was just like intoxicated by this picture. I was like, it was like a drug to, I was in the backseat of these long car trips and I'd just be staring at this Mother Hubbard like it was porn for me. I was, I didn't know what it was, but I was always interested in bums and spanking, and I was always trying to come up with reasons why some someone in my neighborhood should be spanked. And so you'd find me in the forest with some kid over a log and some switches that I'd made and be whacking them. And I was always, let's play house. But somehow that there was this punishment with the spanking, like bums always did it for me. And, um, and then at school, I, I tell the story on my website about being in in school and there's this bully named Charlie and he was mean to other kids. And so I had a group of girlfriends, our little gang, and we cornered Charlie and we tied him to a tree. And of course I pulled down his pants and whipped him. And this is all very inappropriate, by the way, one shouldn't do these things. This is a story about the past, and so I wouldn't do that now, of course, to um, unless it was to an adult. But um, so we would make a game of finding Charlie and capturing him and tying him up, and somehow he became very available. And he'd walk home from school very slowly, and uh, so that's that is what I mean by being hardwired for this. You don't think it came from any thing that you went through as a kid? No, Just because a children's book, children's mm, story. Like I, di- I wasn't exposed to anything. No abuse in your childhood from your parents. No, um, we would be driving in the countryside, and I'd see a house, and I'd start fantasizing about, well, what if that house had like a secret room, and in that room would be spanking equipment, and there would be these things going on. So it's. Like it's hardwired in you. Yeah, so it's without even being exposed to the world of kink. How do you explain that when you're nine, eight, ten? Is there anyone in your family that has a similar inclination? 
I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> You're six foot five, which makes it yeah. even more impressive. Right. And that uh, that makes you a an imposing dom. And you're a sub. You have a uh, mic here. This is slave Mike. Yep. He's been uh, he's been your sub for how long? Um, he's been my sub for about five years. I have another who I've seen for twenty years. Yeah. And these relationships are sexual. No. Um, in the kink world, when you're an old school top, as I am, it's not about vanilla things like sex. It's more about our relationship. Come lie down in front of me. I see you're fidgeting. Lie on your back. It's more about we express our pleasure in different ways. And I control him. He spends time with me. He's my lifestyle sub. So he's my gopher, he's my confidant, he helps me out in whatever I need, um, whether it's showing up for things like this today or just being my errand boy, my someone I can just direct around and, but also play with. The, in a lifestyle relationship, it's about more than just playing in a dungeon. Is it, there a romantic aspect to it though? I, I adore him, he adores me. Um, he, I consider him a partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you are clearly the dominant person in the relationship. Yes. In in every way too, right? N yes. Not just. Yeah. Although general. that's not to be his feelings matter to me. I don't abuse him when they're when he's unhappy. I don't like that. So it's like any relationship. You try to hear what the other person is saying, and. When I am wrong, I apologize. I try to do right by him because he sacrifices a lot for me. And so there is respect there. I respect his boundaries. I also push his boundaries. I push him pretty hard in a lot of ways, but he needs to be treated well also. You care for him. I do, yeah. He's my prized possession. I'd like to thank BetterHelp for being a sponsor of today's video. I think a lot of my viewers are going through things, just like we all are, whether you're a viewer or not of this channel. I think everybody goes through something. And whether it's depression or anxiety or you're just going through a tough period of your life, talking with a professional can be really helpful. You know, personally, I go through just the stress of talking to so many people that are going through tough times, tough, tough stories, is hard on me. And, and talking with a therapist is, is really helpful. So I, I just started doing that recently. It's, it's been really great for me. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of therapy. And with BetterHelp, you can have your therapy session as a phone call or a video session, or even messaging if you prefer. Whatever is most comfortable for you. I did mine as, as video, which is great. It's, it's just like being in their office, but you're doing it from the comfort of your own home. And my BetterHelp therapist has been wonderful. Right, right from the get-go, he, he kind of figured out what my, what my deal is and was really helpful. And what's great about BetterHelp is you get paired with a therapist, you're matched within 48 hours in most cases, if you're just not feeling it with your therapist, you can try another one, or you can try as many times as you like until you find someone that you're comfortable with. And you can do that at no additional charge, which is really nice. So if you'd like to join the over 4 million people that have taken charge of their mental health by talking with an experienced BetterHelp therapist, you can actually get 10% off by going to betterhelp.com forward slash soft white underbelly, or click on the link in the video description box below. I suspect that in some way, it, it, on the surface, it looks like you are clearly in charge. You are the one that runs the show. You're in charge of this, what's, what goes on in this relationship. But it's almost like, you know, maybe we'll have some questions for Mike later. Like he might actually hold the, like be, be kind of, he has a lot, of, lot more control than you would think. He, he is very clever because he has made himself invaluable to me. He is not, easily replaceable. Like on FetLife where we met, um, there are lots of people who want to be my sub, but having a sub is like having a pet. You gotta take care of a pet. And this pet learned 
how to do things for me that I need. So I would be at a loss without him running my social media and all, all these other things that I've come to rely upon him for. So I think he, he did well in learning what makes me tick. And so I would just be devastated to, to lose someone of his value because submission is a gift that you give someone. You're not entitled to it. They're not crap. I value him and what he gives me. And so he needs to be treated well in return. And what he means by being treated well is maybe being trampled by me or just being paid attention to. But I want to disabuse you of the notion that subs are just treated like garbage because they are not. We can't have one without the other, right? I am not powerful without a person being subjugating themselves to me. It is consent that makes the whole thing go. You know, I'm sure there's lots of squares watching this and thinking this is just the weirdest shit ever. What, what do you think people don't understand about this lifestyle? Well, first of all, I don't care if uh, if people think this is weird because this is what works for me. And, and so I try to go through life um, being open to other people and trying to give, trying to hear them. But I have learned that people, people have to be open-minded to understand what I do. And if they just think that's weird, then it's not up to me to defend myself or my lifestyle. Um, it's just here I am like I am. And so, this is a relationship that lasts longer than many vanilla relationships. And it works because of consent, and it works because of love and trust. And great communication. Great communication. I've learned. Yeah. So many of the fetish uh, interviews I've done, and I've done a lot now, the one thing that really impresses me with all of them is the level of communication and, and intelligence amongst the people I've interviewed is like unmatched. I think emotional intelligence as well as intelligence. I find sapiosexual people are uh, a turn on for me, but also emotional intelligence means taking a step back, listening to what the other person is saying and just hearing them. I think people need to be heard. And in this sort of relationship, it's really important to see people, value who they are, hear what they need, and then when I have that information, then I can exploit it and push their boundaries. But first to assess who they are, what they're ready for, what they need to be pulled back from. And uh, yeah, it should be fun ultimately. Life is, should be fun. And when we were young kids, we played a lot. And then as you get older, people, you know, become serious and kind of beaten down by life a little bit. And very restricted. Restricted, and they're not, they're not doing things like role play at home, which is one of the things I love. Um, they're worried about pleasing others, pleasing their parents, pleasing whoever. Yeah, and it's so constraining, expectations. And I, I suspect that people in, this, in these lifestyles are probably some of the most fulfilled, satisfied people <laughs> in our society. And, but at the same time, it's hard to lead, lead this lifestyle. You have to have emotional stamina and fortitude when, you, when you're misunderstood. So that's been something that I've had to be okay with as being an outlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that goes without saying, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. it does. um, are there, so you've had many, you've had more than Mike as a sub. Mm -hmm. what, what have you learned about men from interacting with them in this way? Um, I love men. I find them fascinating. I like playing with them. Um, I'll always love men. I think men over 40 tend to be more confident. I am noticing um, an interesting trend in that younger men these days are exploring more and getting over themselves. But it takes a while for men to 
relax into letting go of patriarchal views. And when they do, I can see the relief flood over them just to relinquish control and to be free, to not have to be this thing that society says, but to give them a safe space to play and a place where they don't have to be judged, where if they want to dress up and like a girl, I approve it. And just to feel like it's okay, like someone's not gonna just be disgusted with them. It's, it's valuing them as a person, it's hearing what they need. I see myself as a healer of sorts. Mm. Yeah. Is being a sub in some ways a release or an escape from the responsibility that, he, that a sub might have at work? Where he's, the, where he's the boss, he's in charge, yeah. everyone's dependent on him to make every decision, or he's responsible for many people, and this is like a, an, a, 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 an escape from that, a release. Absolutely. I think men um, are often, sometimes just because of the way our society is structured, they're always in charge and they're always taking care of other people. And sometimes women. Yes, but with the patriarchal notions about how men should be men and, you know, there are views that, of, that are still held of women too. Um, but when you're a powerful person, you're always taking care of other people. And so when you can be a sub, it's like someone is taking care of you. They're listening to what your needs are and to give them a space where someone can take care of them and they don't have to make any choices is tremendously freeing. Do you, do you think this lifestyle is mostly about control? Mm. What, is, what is the No, I think it's, it's about just whatever the, whatever the fetish is, it's not necessarily about control. It's just having a platform where you have a safe space to discuss your likes without judgment. That doesn't mean I'll always like what other people do and there are plenty of people I don't want to play with. Um, it's not necessarily about control, though when I'm topping, I'm the boss, right? It's my games, my house, my rules, don't like it, go away, right? It, it, it sounds like this was in your personality even as a young girl. Yes. Is there ever a part of your personality where you are not looking to be in charge, be, be the dom? Um, just because I'm a dom doesn't mean I go to the checkout counter and boss people around. I'm a, a humble person. Respectful. I, absolutely, yeah. There's a time and a place for everything. And I, I tend to judge people based on how they treat others. If, if you're rude to the waiter, I'm not gonna like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe in treating people well. Yeah, we, you know, looking at you, the way you're dressed, the way you're behaving with, with your sub, you would get the impression you're just a, a force to, that will, will never, no one will ever get over on you. But you're a person too. I am, but I mean, that's, even though I talk about respect, I can be a bit mercurial. So I am a bit of a demon, but I try to rein it back. Have you ever had what we would call vanilla relationships before you got into this lifestyle? I have, and I found it challenging in a number of ways. Um, people weren't open. They didn't understand things like role play, like why do we have to be different people? And um, so I, I found it difficult to have intimacy because I'd have to escape in my head because they weren't comfortable trying things, and so that ultimately led to the breakup. Or just, and then when I was in the lifestyle, people who were straighter, so-called, um, <clears throat> they just couldn't deal with all this, mm -hmm. so, yeah. What, what do you think people that don't understand this lifestyle would, would misunderstand about a sub? You, you would look at, at, at Mike and you would say, oh my God, he's such a, it's such a humiliating situation he's in. It's just, it, it's degrading. It's like. But look how much attention he's getting and he gets to hang out with me. What could be better than that? I don't let just 
any person come and spend like three weeks with me coming up and serving me breakfast and hanging out. We're together a lot. And wouldn't you like to be with me? I'm fun. You look fun. <laughs> and he gets to dress this way. And yeah. But you're not dressed this way all the time. You're Not sometimes... all the time, but uh, he wears a collar. He does my bidding. Like, what else would you rather be doing, right? What's not to like? Mike, you, you enjoy this lifestyle? Uh, indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> How extreme does your, um, um, I don't want to say punishment, but your, your interactions with, with your subs get? Well, in my, when, in my personal life playing, I express my displeasure quite vociferously. So I find that subs tend to do boneheaded things. So I'm going to have a comment about that. Some things are not acceptable, and you, you can't anticipate some things that subs would do. So uh, sometimes I uh, get so annoyed with them. And so they need to hear it, and they need to be punished. And we try to think of ways like, how can we prevent this from happening again? Like, how can I help you? Help me help you not to do this again. And sometimes I think, well, the best way is a painful reminder. So let's go to the kitchen. Let me just pull out whatever wooden spoon I have, bend over, drop your pants, and let's try to remember these details, like whatever it is, to, to hone in this little accident and reminder. Right, Mike? Yes, mistress. Yeah. <laughs> In your romantic life, this this overlaps with that, or is it separate from this? Um, well, my slaves are my slaves, but in my life outside the scene, I'm still in the scene. So I I need kinky people. Yeah, it's how I'm wired. Have you had other careers? Um, I was a grocery clerk once <laughs> and a produce manager. Uh, I studied criminology, applied science. I have a BFA and an MFA, so I'm also a painter. How did, how did you discover this lifestyle? Um, so I played professional basketball in Europe and when I finished, I had an Achilles injury back then, and I got a call from this agent I'd once worked for doing modeling in LA about being on the Maury Povich show in New York City. And they were doing a show on opposite attractions. And I had to say that I really enjoyed short men, which I have an affinity for. So I came to New York to do this talk show, and I thought, well, my basketball career is over. Maybe I could stay in New York, and I tried to get a job uh, via my criminology degree and they just looked at my uh, resume and said why would you want to work here so no one was hiring and at the time there were the yellow pages if you remember those so I was flickering through what am I going to do like I was living by the skin of my teeth in New York City right that's not a good place to have no money and I came across this page for domination from the Terrell Institute uh, which was a famous place at the time for domination and I called up and explained that I was new in the city. And the headmistress, Ava Terrell, said, oh, no, no, we have everyone we need. We don't need anybody. And I said, did I mention I'm six foot five? She said, oh, you must come down immediately. And that was so lucky for me because she took me under her wing. She taught me the correct way to top because you can get sucked into the seedy underbelly of things in, in New York City. And um, she was this fantastic mentor for me. And from her, I learned the ropes and um, my career proceeded from then. You had, you had someone to teach you, the, teach you how to? Yes, she was very wise, um, very, she was the daughter of a prince. She was a film star in Mexico. She was, just fantastic in so many ways. And I was really lucky because um, she was just 
so smart and just she was at the at the very high end of things and so I learned what could be done and how people should be treated and one of the things that she taught me was that people who are happy with their sex life or with their fetish life or with their fantasy life will be more fulfilled people overall in their whole life Absolutely. so when when we are fulfilled in some way that like just affects everything in life and it's important and um, it should be sought after people should be happy this way think of how marriages collapse because they don't people don't feel free to express what they like, and they have affairs, and they fall, split apart from their spouse because you just there's a breakdown in communication, and people stop playing, and that's sex and intimacy rather is the glue that can hold the relationship together, right? It can smooth over those little hurts, bring you closer to your partner. You can just. You can cry, you can laugh, but when, you, when you're when you like physically distant from your significant other, then just things, you don't have that relationship like you first may have when you first got involved. And this sort of play is infinite because you can keep pushing your boundaries, you can keep exploring. One of the things that I really like is role play. So you don't have to be yourself, you can be riding on your stationary bike, you know, and your spouse can come arrest you for speeding, things like that. Like I play games like that. It's, it's about keeping the fun alive. And I think this lifestyle is a good way to just get the most out of life. We're here for such a short time. Like, let's, let's have fun. Let's do something. Let's not just get ground down, you know. You just found a very unique way of making the, the relationship you know, refreshing for both people. I'm a vessel from God, and this is my personal way to make the world better, whether it's kicking men in the balls, um, putting them in their place, dressing them up as women. I believe this is, this is what I was meant to do. <laughs> what were your parents like? Uh, they're ac academics, yeah. But there was no particularly unusual personality there? Um, I was raised with almost Victorian standards of propriety on one side, and then kind of a dominant uh, big figure on the other side with a larger temper. And I think that flip-flop uh, somehow manifested itself in me in a, in a very curious way. May I ask? your sub a few questions? Sure. Um, might get up on your knees. Come back here. Is that comfy for you? Yes, mistress. Okay. So Mike, you, uh, you have had careers, professional careers? Yes, I have. I'm, uh, I'm a retired computer systems analyst. And was your previous career was one where you were kind of in charge, you had a lot of responsibility, you had, you know, a, a lot of power? Yes, I have managed teams, uh, small to medium teams of people. And, and this relationship is kind of an escape from those, um, those, those, that role that you had? Um, the role that I had at work doesn't really have anything to do with this. I've been wired this way since my early, early 20s. Really? Yes. But what was your childhood like? Um, it was your typical 70s family. My father was in charge. Um, we just, I don't know, <laughs> it's just like a typical family. Mm -hmm. Nothing particularly unusual, no abuse, nothing like that? Nothing like that, no. I mean, you'd get spanked when you did something wrong, but that was it. That was it, yeah. Can I interject? I noticed that you ask about abuse. Um, did you see Fifty Shades of Grey? I never saw it. Okay, well, there's sometimes this notion that people who are in this scene, 
there's something in their past where they've been harmed in some way. That's, that's the assumption a lot of people yeah, will make. Yeah. yeah, no. And I think like we're not necessarily, sure there are people who are messed up in the scene, but they're messed up people everywhere. But you don't have to have abuse in your past to be interested in deviant things. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, even though so many people that come from abuse end up finding very alternative relationships. Yeah. There's also people who come from very normal ones who mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. take the same route. So Mike, you, you enjoy this relationship very much, it seems like. I do, and uh, by the way, I was never abused as a child. Yeah, we, we made that clear. But um, yeah, I enjoy this lifestyle tremendously. But it was your favorite thing about your your mistress. Oh my. <laughs> she when I was when I was first exploring this in my twenties and thirties, my ideal mistress was six and a half feet tall and muscular, dominant. And I never thought I'd find such a woman. Um, and I've seen more how, how, how tall are you, Mike? I'm five nine. Five nine. And I've seen more mistresses than I can count. And when I finally found her, my search was over. Yeah, I believe that. I flew from Toronto to Vancouver to see her for the first time. And I had never done that before. And that was it. As soon as I met her in person, I knew it. Like we had communicated for four or five months before the meeting, but after after the first meeting, it's like, yes, she's the one. And the way she, I mean, what, what is she, how would you describe what she does to you when you guys are interacting with, with in, this, in this lifestyle? Is it degrading you? Is it um, demeaning? I mean, it's not degrading. I mean, you can ask when you're playing. It's like sometimes you'll ask if I have a request. You know, I can ask for humiliation. But in, in normal, day-to-day -day life, no, she treats me with a lot of respect and care and love. And what we do in our private time, playtime, I keep private. Yeah. That's not to say also that when he screws up that I don't degrade him. Would you say that I can be quite outspoken? Oh, yes, <laughs> very. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. reel in my temper sometimes for people that I'm really involved with. Like, I can let loose. Is that not true? Yes, mistress. <laughs> <laughs> then I say, ooh, are you okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, is, is your mistress a, a caring person? She's very caring. She's very firm but, and fair but she's also very loving and very caring. But she's the boss. Oh, definitely, she's the boss. Uh, and mistress, have, have you had subs, like a, a new sub who has a special request of something he, a particular, particular treatment he would like? Uh, yeah, they all have interesting requests, some from the standard to the more... But, but what is the standard? The standard is, um, so I'm really good at physically dominating. I have a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and so I learned that I really like to work with my body to oppress, shall we say. And so I'm very hands-on. Like I like to touch and grab and do things with my body instead of directing people, do this, do that, but to make them. But I had this one... Uh, playmate in New York who wanted to show me. He said, may I show you something? I always wanted to be a mother. This was a, a man. So I said, okay, by all means. So he uh, went and squatted in the corner and out popped a doll that he had inserted and um, he gave birth uh, in my play space to this. <laughs> I was like, congratulations, you're, you're a, a mother. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you do come across a, a wide variety of interesting people. What kind of things do you guys get into? Just what is a typical dom sub thing where you're humiliating your 
physically bossing him around, you're pushing him? Um, not necessarily humiliating. It has to be tailored specifically because some people would be triggered by being hum humiliated, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily about humiliation, but exploring a fetish together, like the way stockings feel or how it feels to wear a negligee or satin. And then to we could both be wearing satiny outfits and admiring um, how someone looks in high heels and ob objectifying them and making them feel sexy. Other people uh, want things like to feel the power of a woman. And so I would have the shock and awe approach of getting them down to the wrestling mat and choking them and doing triangles and putting the fear of God in them. So, <laughs> do, you, do you have a dungeon? Um, I use a space in LA and San Diego, mm -hmm. yeah. Mike and uh, Goddess Severa, what, what would you say, I'll ask you these questions separately. Mike, what, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned from this lifestyle? Um, do your research. If you're looking for a new mistress, make sure that she's, it's gonna be a safe experience. And always communicate what your limits are and have a safe word and out. So that is something, just a... something that's going south on you in a hurry, you can tap out or use a safe word and just keep it safe and insane. <laughs> Excellent. And, and Goddess Severa, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in life or in this lifestyle? I, I think that the skill set I've learned in the lifestyle has transferable elements to the real world, like expressing boundaries when something isn't right. Um, women have often had a hard time expressing things and don't express things right away when something isn't right, um, especially when it comes to men. And learning how to say, no, no, stop, that's not correct, back off or just Expressing boundaries in general is something that um, will serve you well, regardless of your gender. Absolutely. Yeah. That's an important thing for a lot of people to understand. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Goddess Severa and Mike, thank you so much for sharing your story. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for having us. <laughs> you thank guys are you. amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.